start another one. All right, so I'm not gonna introduce any new material now. The only thing I wanted to do, um, yes, I see a question about, will they all be on? Yes, my understanding, although I don't think it has been officially announced yet, is next semester will be 100% online at City College. I do not think the buildings are gonna open up again. And I think that's true of all colleges. And my classes will be the same as this. They'll be on Zoom. Um, the classes are here and the schedule has come out. So you folks can start enrolling, by the way. I'm glad you asked. I put a link here. I've, they've changed the schedule website again to make it even more confusing. So I just put a link here. If you want to enroll to one of my classes, you can just click that link and it will, well, I thought it would take you to my class, but apparently not. Oh, there it does. Good. This takes you to the classes. Um, this is the first search engine I've ever seen that will not let you type part of a search phrase. You have to get exactly the right search phrase. Uh, and I, there's no way you're going to be able to tell that. Anyway, you can set up for classes here. Let's see how they're doing. Yeah, they're all got only a couple of people signed up for anything. See, almost all the seats are available. Anyway, so that's where you can find classes if you want to avoid uh, trying to navigate the City College search. But they'll all be like this, uh, remote attendance on Zoom um, with email and such. I don't think there's any chance of physical building opening in the fall. Although, as I say, that has not been officially announced yet, but that's my understanding. So be the same as this. The money situation, yeah, that's a very good question. Uh, nobody knows. Nobody knows what the enrollment is gonna be and nobody knows what the state budget is gonna be. But I think all the signs are pretty bad. Enrollment might go up because so many people are out of work and probably a lot of people would rather go to a cheap community college than pay for an expensive college. So they might come back to community college but I highly expect the state budget to be cut. I expect the education money to get cut. So I, I don't know, but I don't think they can affect my classes because I'm highly senior full-timer. So my classes will survive. Uh, the part-timers classes might get cut. Uh, so no, and nothing will be known until uh, just before the semester, if then. What if CCS will keep charging for medical insurance? Yeah, it's a very good question. Um, I have no idea what they're going to do about fees. I know a lot of people are arguing about this at many colleges. They're saying that the expensive four-year colleges should really cut their fees since their experience is probably much inferior to what they expected, where you go to campus and get to go to fraternities and parties and everything. Um, but none of that is clear. Um, these are very good questions. But um, I, I've learned years ago to never wait for the City College Administration to do anything, just move ahead regardless. And that actually takes me to what I'm doing here. I added some extra stuff here, even though it's so late in the semester, probably I did not expect any students to do it, although some of them are. And some have even been asking, what are these columns in Canvas where I can get extra credit? So the one I wanna just point out tonight, if you haven't seen it, is the attack CTF. And I've added more to it just today. I'm adding more and more to this. This is actually very interesting. So this is an attempt to make an organized plan for um, defense, and for that matter, also attack. This is the MITRE attack framework, and I'm gonna try and blow this way up so it might look good to remote viewers and the video and such. This chart is the big thing, and this chart contains something like 200 techniques. So what they've done is sort them into 12 categories, initial access from things like drive-by compromise and then how you execute code, how you maintain persistence, so even restarting the target doesn't get rid of you, how you escalate privileges to become administrator, how you avoid defense measures, and how you get credentials to move across to another system. And let me see if I can scroll to the right somehow. I was hoping I'd be able to scroll to the right, but it does not seem like my browser is going to allow me to do that. So I'm going to have to shrink it to show you the right side, which is what I was trying to avoid, but that's life. All right. So uh, then you've got impact and command and control and so on. So anyway, I thought this is very interesting. I made a couple of uh, games where you practice learning these terms and I kept going and I just found a new one, which I put in today for uh, I mentioned groups and a navigator. Those are the two I added today. Groups is pretty simple. Um, that just is where you go to this page where it tells you a summary of what all the groups did, APT1 and so on. And I find this very interesting because I've been reading about the news for these things for years. And this is a nice study of them. APT1 was the start of it all. 
the Chinese threat group, but there are many other Chinese threat groups. And there's ones from Vietnam and North Korea and Russia and all over. And this tells you what they did and what other names they have. And a lot of them have names, you know, like Dark Hotel and Dark Hydras. Now, there's ones in the Middle East. There's one from Vietnam. Now, here's the one that performed the Aurora attack on 2009. This is the one that blew the lid off the whole thing. Advanced resistant threats were kind of a secret until the 2009 attack by the Chinese on Google called Operation Aurora. And this made Google so mad that they exposed this stuff publicly and this all became public. And now people plan to handle specific attacks from specific groups. And by the way, the one I was looking for, which is very entertaining, and I couldn't put it in my CTF, was the equation group. I didn't expect to see the equation group here at all. The equation group is the American military, the NSA. Everyone knows that, but they don't say that here. And I thought a tool published in America would not be able to tell you what equation is. And they don't actually tell you. They, in fact, I think they're totally lying. They give them only a very small list of techniques which is very hard to make them sound very unimportant. But if you read Kaspersky, the Russians know all about the equation group and they publish their techniques. And of course, they are awesomely powerful and they have a lot of zero days, but nobody ever admits that it's the NSA. The Russians gave them this code name of the equation group and all, they'll only go so far as to say they do their work on normal business hours in the East Coast of the United States. But other than that, it's like one of those open secrets who they are. I was going to put in my quiz somewhere, which one is the NSA, but you can't see that stated anywhere here because I don't think anybody in the United States is allowed to officially say that. Anyway, so that's the attack groups. And the other thing which I found very interesting is the attack navigator, which is here. So I want to show you how to use this because I saw this about a year ago and I thought it was too complicated and now I've got to understand it. So this lists all the techniques and all the, um, uh, tactics. These are tactics and these little things are techniques. And the thing about this is you can compare groups and see how they work. So you can go here and add a group. Like I can add APT39, which is one of the big ones. So I select it and it highlight, it selects all the uh, things that that group can do. And then I can assign points to it. So I'll give it a score of one for being an APT29. Oh, that was 39, I think. Now you can name your tab here, just like Excel. So that was APT39. And if I wanted to compare them to somebody else, I'd add a new tab, just like in Excel, creating a new layer, and then compare them to a different group, like uh, Cobalt, for example, is another group that does a lot. They're a Cobalt group. I select them. And I'll give them some points and I'll give them two points. Okay, so those are the things Cobalt Group does, the red ones. I'll name this tab Cobalt. Okay, and here's what APT39 does. So I could flip back and forth to compare them, but you can also compare them in an automated way, which is great. You can make a new layer from other layers, and then it shows you a yellow A and B here, and you can type an expression A plus B. So it's gonna take the score and add them together and create that tab. And now I got color-coded charts where red is a score of one. So that means APT39 only. And yellow is a score of two. So that means cobalt only. And green means both of them for a score of three. So I can now compare two groups and see what they have in common and what's different between them. And you can see how if you found a new group, you could do something like this and try to see if it matched an existing group and things like that. So this is actually very interesting. And you can do this for um, groups and you can do it for many groups comparing and you can do it for um, more than groups. You can do it for specific pieces of malware, software, like Agent Tesla and uh, there's a rat in here. There's Finn Fisher, something I've heard a lot about. Let's take a look at Finn Fisher. Let's add another tab and see how Finn Fisher works. Finn Fisher is very famous. Finn Fisher was used to spy on, I think, journalists and stuff. It was, um, came, I think, from a Middle East country first, and it's basically a commercial tool, sold to governments to spy on uh, 
people they call terrorists, but it turns out to be used on human rights uh, activists and journalists and all sorts of people, because those people are often regarded as terrorists by governments like ours these days. So anyway, um, then let's give it a score of say three for that. There, so Finn Fisher has all these techniques and notice how Finn Fisher does not have any initial access or execution because it doesn't sneak in in spear phishing. It's something you install, you buy and install like the sort of, so if you wanted to sneak it onto a machine, you'd have to add some other tool to give it those features, but it has all these features and so on. So anyway, I made a uh, game you can play here. It's all worth extra credit where you have to answer questions like this, what privilege Escalation technique was used by APT3 and APT29. But I think I'll just work through that one to make it clear. And there's an instruction here that I think shows you the answer to that one. Um, APT3 and APT29. Uh, so I go here and I've already got APT39. Okay, I'm gonna APT3 and 29. I'm gonna delete all these. There's a limit. I think you can only have about eight tabs at a time. So three and 29. I go here and make three, select, and I assign them one point. Okay, and then I label it because I've learned to always label them right away because I get confused and I haven't figured out any way to after the fact find out what I, how I made that sheet. So now I make a new sheet and I make it APT, was it three and 39 or three and 29? It was three and 29, okay. So let's make this one APT29, which is here. So I select APT29 and I give it scoring of two points. Okay, and now that's APT29. Okay, and now I compare the two. So I make a new layer from other layers and it's A plus B, which is fine. So I create that. So this is the sum of the two. So uh, the green is the score of three where both of them are used. And now I should be able to answer that question. And the question was, what privilege escalation technique is used by three and 29? And so privilege escalation is here. So accessibility features is one and scheduled task is another. So those are the possible answers, accessible accessibility and scheduled task. And when I go here, there's accessibility and scheduled task. Whoa, that's rude. Well, I'm going to have to fix this if there's actually two right answers. Um, hmm, all right, well, I'll, I'll, I'll update this after I make this video. That one here, I think the right answer is accessibility features, but I should change this to something else because it looks like scheduled task would be just as good an answer. I did not intend to make it ambiguous. Anyway, um, so that's what it's like. And uh, if you get 10 in the right, you get a flag as usual. So check this out if you like. Uh, this is very new. It's been developed over the last couple of years. I'm getting very interested in it. I think there are going to be textbooks and certifications and uh, software tools and such based on this. There are already things like Atomic Red Team, which is an automated tool, slightly automated, to help you perform these attacks and then ways to detect it in Splunk and uh, server logs and such. So I'm planning to write projects and all that. So this will probably grow into more or less a whole course on using the attack navigator to attack and defend systems. But the first thing before you can do that is to just learn all the terms and understand the concepts. And that's all this stuff is. This is all flashcard type work. After this, I'm hoping to move into hands-on projects where you set up virtual machines and run attack, attack tools and attack defense tools. And this is how people are organizing, protecting their companies, improving their infrastructure, designing their blue teams and such. It is uh, yeah, I've watched it develop over the last couple of years and only in the last few weeks have I finally found a way to like uh, begin using it and understanding it. So anyway, um, all right. So are there any questions about anything? Well, I'm gonna stop the recording.